Welcome to HP Tuner's GM Gen 5 training part 29. In this training module, we're gonna be exploring working in units of EQ ratio and lambda, and why we wanna work in units of lambda rather than air fuel that you displayed on a wideband reading. We're gonna have a lot to cover. Let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna be taking a look at understanding the differences between lambda, air fuel, and the stoichiometric of the fuel type that we're dealing with. These all fit together hand in hand, it's a very confusing topic, especially if you're a novice tuner and you're getting started. This is a hanging point for a lot of people. So I want to break this down so it makes complete sense. So as we move through future training modules here in our training course, you're going to understand the importance of tuning in Lambda and why you don't actually want to look at an air fuel reading or an air fuel ratio reading in your data logs when you're doing your calibration process. So let's jump in here. We're going to move from our VCM editor software. We're gonna jump right into our VCM scanner software and take a look at a data log. Let me go do that right now. I'm gonna jump into our VCM scanner. Now, this data log is just a basic data log. I'm in idle conditions with our Gen 5 test vehicle, which is a 2018 Yukon Denali. So we're gonna find here, just put my cursor here, my chart versus time. We can see we have all of our various channels that are being logged on the left-hand side, and we see our chart versus time is plotting a whole bunch of different channels. What we're going to be turning our attention to is going to be down here, specifically at the equivalent ratio command it, air fuel ratio command it, and wideband EQ ratio 1. Now, the wideband EQ ratio 1, that's going to be the reading from my wideband. I have an AM X series wideband that has an OBD2 port integration. It's actually the wideband of choice. We're going to be talking about how to integrate that and bring that into your VCM scanner if you're running that particular wideband or another type of wideband in a future training module. Just understand right now, we're looking at the data and trying to understand how this all fits together. So this is going to be essentially the reading for my wideband. Now, if you were looking at the wideband display, if you were co coinciding uh, the wideband display with the data log here, you would notice that the wideband would be reading something like 14.7 or 14.6 or 14.91 as the engine was idling here. We can see this lambda amount is varying around. The lambda here and the air fuel reading on my gauge are actually correlated to each other. We're gonna find they're just in a different unit scale. My wideband gauge is displaying units of petrol, air, petrol gasoline air fuel, so pure petrol gasoline air fuel, where my logging here is actually logging the exact same reading from the wideband but it's, re it's logging it and looking at it in different units. This would be the equivalent if we're looking at, uh, let's say a gauge display, it's showing units of Fahrenheit, but we're showing in our data log units of Celsius. It's the same information, just in a different unit scale. Now we wanna work in units of Lambda because it takes the confusion away from uh, trying to understand exact fuel blend that we have in our fuel system. So whether we're running methanol, ethanol, pure petrol fuel, or a blend between ethanol and petrol fuel, uh, hydrogen, propane, whatever we're trying to burn in our engine. It takes the confusion away from knowing what the stoichiometric point is going to be for that fuel type. And that'll make a little bit more sense here in just a few minutes when I jump into our Excel spreadsheet. Now, moving from my actual wideband reading, we're going to notice here that we have something called equivalent ratio commanded. What this is going to be is the commanded lambda, the actual target lambda that we want to run at for the conditions that we're operating in. So in this particular case, we're at idle, idle part throttle cruise conditions. We're going to be targeting 1.0 lambda or stoichiometric. Stoichiometric is going to be a blend between having good emissions coming out the tailpipe, good power production out of the engine, and good fuel economy. It's going to compromise between all of those. So at idle and part throttle, we're going to always shoot for 1.0 lambda. Once we get into high load situations, so full throttle, going into uh, high load, full throttle, we're going to be switching over to what's known as power enrichment, and we go in and actually command a richer command it EQ ratio, which is going to be a lower number, something like 0 0.7, 0 0.75, 0 0.8, 0 0.85, whatever the case may be, whatever we command in power enrichment, we richen up our mixture so that we don't have knock or pre-ignition and the engine is able to make better power. But for, again, emissions and economy purposes and good power production, again, getting a blend between that, we shoot for 1.0 lambda or stoichiometric. Now you're going to be noticing our other channel here. This is air fuel ratio commanded. Now, that might be confusing because you're seeing here, this is showing 14.11 air fuel. Now, that's what it's trying to target for the target air fuel. Now, we're seeing here, if we're looking at the gauge itself, I'm looking at my wideband gauge, I'm not hitting 14.11 on my gauge. I'm actually going to be showing 
14.6, 14.7, 14.8 as it hovers around here. We see that lambda reading is moving around here a little bit. That's because this is specifying the stoichiometric ratio for the fuel that we're dealing with. So the way this is programmed, and you'll probably notice if you jump into your calibration file. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.